Know this today that the devil has you on his giant computer. He has you on that watch. He monitors you spiritually from here through your phone, your laptop, your TV, your radio, etc., etc. And all these and more refer to the image of the beast. Hey, do you see what I'm seeing? So, the Good News Bible removed worship in all the verses that I just mentioned to you. But when he gets to where his master should be worshipped, he put the word worship because he wanted Jesus Christ to worship his master, the devil. But other places that Jesus was supposed to be worshipped, Good News Bible removed the word worship. Welcome back. This is End Time Evangelist. God bless you. So today we are going to treat the topic I titled the secrets of a successful marriage life. The secrets of a successful marriage life. You know, a lot of marriages today are in a mess. In a very, very big mess because of how the couples are living. Because of their inability to live their marriage in accordance by the laid down rules and regulation that God has given, you know, for marriage people. Also, many marriages have problems today because they married in the world. God was not part of the marriage. They went ahead and got married to people of their own choice and not the choice of God. A lot of marriages are in a very big mess today because they didn't involve God in their marriage. They didn't involve God in their marriage. A lot of marriages have problems today because the man out of infatuation, the, the, the woman out of infatuation, out of what I call blind love, got involved in a relationship that was not designed by God. And these blindly led them into getting married. And this marriage was not perfect and is not perfect and God's hand is not there. A lot of marriages are in a very big mess today because of deception. Some men come with deceptive hearts. Some sisters come with deceptive hearts to deceive a brother, to deceive a sister, into claiming to love them, pretending to love them only for them to get what they wanted or what they needed and the moment they have achieved their aim then the first love they had for the sister the first love they had for the brother is now lost if i may ask you now when last did you kiss your wives when last did you hug your husbands you wives have you ever welcomed your husband in a romantic manner you that have married your wife for a long while have you ever sucked the breast of your wife if you haven't done any of this it means that you are not romantic towards your spouse and your marriage has a big problem let us pray father in the name of jesus i thank you i bless you because you are holy you're righteous there is none like you lord i commit this message in your hand the secrets of a successful marriage life. And Lord, I pray that your spirit will move now. Your spirit will pass through me, O Lord, and pass through this video to touch lives in the mighty name of Jesus. That through this message, as many marriages, O Lord, that are already in a big mess, Father, you will mend them. Those that have married wrong, you will open their eyes so they can find their way. Those that are in a wrong marriage that you did not approve, you, you, you were not part of it, that you did not, you were not pleased. I pray that by this video, Lord, you will give them understanding, you will open their eyes, you will teach them knowledge, you will show them how to marry right. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, Marriage is one thing that you have to be very, very careful about because if you make mistake in marriage, it's really going to affect many things about your life. It will definitely affect many things about your life. When you talk about marriage, marriage is not all about I am old enough to get married, I am 45 years, 
I am 35 years, I am 50 years, I am 25 years. Marriage does not, you know, it does not count on age. It counts on experience, maturity of mind, readiness to take care of a wife, readiness to manage a home, your ability to manage a man as a woman, your ability to manage a woman as a man, ability that comes from your heart, the ability that comes from your mind, the ability that unites your spirit, soul, and body, and the ability that comes from your, your, your strength, your inner strength, to be able to manage a home. Because it is not everybody that can manage a home. It is possible you are 50 years of age as a man, but you are not mature in mind to take a wife. You might be 45 years of age as a man, but you are not yet mature to take a wife because your brains, your thinking, your heart, your mind, you see think like a child. You see behave like a child. You don't have what it takes to manage a home. And if you go ahead to marry in that state, then your marriage will have a problem. And if you are a sister, you feel you are 35 years and you are old enough to get married. But are you old on your mind? Are you old enough at heart? Because the major problems that people have or encounter in marriages, the major problem is immaturity of mind, immaturity of heart, immaturity of their spirit. Because your spirit, soul, and body has to, have to agree together. A lot of people today, they get married because uh, a man has money. And this man has a lot of money. He has cars, you know, fine, fine, flashy cars. He's from a rich family. He has a you know, very beautiful and glassy buildings. That is money. He's a prince. He comes from a rich home. His father is a politician. He has money. His dad is a very renowned businessman. His mother is a senator. If you are marrying because of materials, you know, material things of this world, and you are not marrying because you, 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 have, you love a man, and this man that you love, you have taken him to God in prayer and asked God, Father, is this person my husband? You haven't taken your time to pray because you, your, your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your body have been taken over by infatuation, by the things of the world, by lust, by the lust of the eyes, lust of the mind, lust of the heart. You were not in control or you are not controlled by the leading of the Holy Spirit. You are controlled by the things your eyes see. You are controlled by the things your heart see. You are controlled by the things that have filled your mind. You have seen a brother that is rich, he's handsome, he has a very good body building. And, ah, this is the kind of man I've been looking for. I want a man that has you know, good body structure, a man that has six packs, a man that has four packs, a man that has uh, eight packs, a man that has money. This is the dream of husband I have been praying for. This is my husband dream. I have found the husband because you feel everything you want in that man is there. My sister, you are making a very big mistake because you are choosing blindly. And, <clears throat> excuse me, because marriage is something that when you enter into it, especially when you enter into it according to the will of God, because I'm going to tell you what is marriage. Then I will tell you the marriages that God approves, the type of marriage that God approves. Then by the special grace of God, I am also going to tell you the things you shouldn't do as a married couple. If you have married legally and according to the will of God, then I am also going to tell you the things you need to do to keep your marriage stable and alive and going and even lively. So that your marriage don't get bored and in the, in, 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 the, in, in the course of time, your husbands or your wife begin to feel like you are a boring man, you are a boring woman, I don't like this, I don't like that. 
I am going to tell you certain things you need to do to keep your marriage going by the special grace of God. So what am I saying? The things that people do wrong today in their marriage, one of them is the one I'm just telling you now. You marry a man because he has money. You marry a woman because she has she has all the beauty you are looking for in a woman. She has the back, she has the front, she has the shape, she has the kind of you know legs. She has all the things you want in a woman. She's she's very tall, she's very fair and pretty. And to, to make it worse, she's from a rich family. And you are from a rich family too. And they say, God, oh, this is God's doing, this is divine. Are you sure that is divine? Are you sure it is from God? Have you taken it to God in prayer? So these are this is one of the things that people do in marriage. They marry out of sight. And they, they don't marry out of God's leading. They marry out of their own mind, their own will, their own choice. They don't marry by God's choosing. And they, they make this mistake and they, they, they end up having problems in their marriage. And how does it happen? In the course of school life, you meet a man at school. It could be in secondary school, it could be in the university. You meet a man, you, know, you didn't know him from anywhere. You people just met at school. And you started life together. You started life with this man. You started, you started sleeping with this man. This man takes you to bed, takes you to hotel, sleeps you with you because he has promised you that I will marry you. And this is very, very wrong. Because the moment you start sleeping with a man before your marriage, that marriage is going to have serious problem. You are already selling your dignity. You are already selling your respect in that marriage. That marriage is no longer honored by God. The Bible says marriage is honorable hmm? with the bed on the fire. Hebrews 13 verse 4. So the moment you start taking a, ma a woman to bed or taking a man to bed to sleep with you because you want to, you know, you don't want him to leave you. You want to keep the man. He is the man you have been dreaming of and now you found him. And you don't want him to leave you. He would threaten you. If you don't give me sex, uh, there are a lot of girls, a lot of sisters that are, you know, queuing online. They want me to marry them. If you don't give me sex, then you are a loser. And you being foolish enough because you don't trust in God. You are not born again. You could be even a Christian and you make this same mistake. If you go ahead and you do that, that marriage is already defied. And it is going to, God might still approve that marriage if that man is your will, is the person that God wants to marry. God might still approve the marriage, but it is going to affect you in the future because even that man that will marry you may not trust you fully. When you go out of, her, out of the house to a place, he may not trust you. He might feel that when you go out the same way he was able to make you sleep with him, you might as well be convinced by any other man to take you to bed and sleep with you and you commit adultery so it is very important that before any man marries you no matter how much the person loves you no matter how much money or how much influence the person might be no matter how much rich the person might be no matter how much famous the person might be in the society where you are or where you have met such a man it is very, very dangerous and inadvisable that you marry, you, that you sleep with such a man before he takes you to the altar. It is going to affect you very, very well if you do that mistake. So this is one of the mistakes that people make in marriage. Another one is this. A man finds you on the way and he sees all the beauty that God has endowed you, your back, your bum bum, your chest, your breast, your, your face, your look, your everything. All the carvings that God has given you. And this man out of lust, not out of love. Any man that sees a sister on the road and stops that sister. They don't just stop one sister on the road. They stop different sisters on the way. It is not a bad thing you see a sister once in a while. And once in, once in a while. And you stop this because you are genuinely... You genuinely want to marry the sister and you want to know where the sister is coming from. You really want to talk to the sister. It is not a bad thing. You stop on the road to you know, ask such a sister some questions. 
Which family are you coming from? What is your name? Who are your parents? Are you in a relationship? Are you married? This kind of stuff. But if you're a man that you see any girl you see, you have to stop. You look back. You look at their back, the way they are walking, their walking gait, all these things. You are looking at it. It means that you are lusting after them. You are not seeking a wife. You are lusting after them. So if you're this kind of guy that any sister you see on the road, you do like this. And in the process of doing that, you are able, you are able to find a sister and you start sleeping with this sister. And this sister, in your heart, you know that you are not going to marry her. But you keep lying to her. I will marry you. You are my sweetheart. You are my darling. You are my this. You are the sugar in my tea. You begin to wind this girl. Wind this girl. Wind her brain up. You begin to twist her brain. You make her feel, feel special. Feel too special. Feel what you don't feel for her in your heart. You tell her the things you don't feel for her in your heart. You are a deceptive person. And the sister herself will fall for this. The next thing, because of how much of how much of her brains you have washed, the next thing she will pack her bags and come and stay in your house, and you start sleeping with this sister. And there are people out there in the world that are living life like this. They live with a sister in the house for years, three years, five years, seven years, ten years. Some of them even have babies for the man. They're having babies together. And yet, this man has not asked you, well, how can I see your parents? I think I, I should pay your dowry. Let me, do, let me do the right thing. And it, it's possible that this sister already has like five to six to seven or three children with this man. But this man never paid your dowry. He hasn't paid your dowry. And such a sister, you are still remaining in that marriage. You're not even married because when a man hasn't paid your dowry, you're not married. You know, it is a funny thing when you say you want to divorce a man that you have not married. You know, I have encountered couples in my former place where I was living, my neighbors. Couples that were not married properly. They never married properly. And they were always fighting. This brother, the sister has like, I think, four or five to six children for him. I think four to five children for him, for this brother. And this brother has the temerity, the guts to go outside, bring another sister, sleep with her, even impregnate another sister. Whereas the first woman you are married to, you have not paid her dowry and she already has kids for you. These are the things that people you know, do. These are the mistakes that people make in their life. And eventually this taking you home to your parents to see your parents who hasn't sought a way to pay your dowry then you better leave that man whether you already have kids for that man you better leave that man because it is really going to affect your life it will affect your life very very well in the future to destroy your life so this is the mistake or one of the mistakes that people make in their life so yeah, she's my boy, she's my boy, my girlfriend, he's my boyfriend. From being boyfriend to getting pregnancy, and from getting pregnancy, the next thing they will live together, and from living together, the next thing they will destroy their lives. Because the devil will make you forget to pay the dowry, so that when you die, you go to hell. Now, what is marriage, by the way? I just wanted to briefly, you know, tell you these things. 
What is marriage? Don't forget that we are treating the secrets of successful marriage life. And the marriage life I'm talking about is the marriage life in Christ. Marriage life in Christ. Marriage is a union of two, two opposite sex who come together to live under a roof for some reasons. A lot of people have some reasons why they want to marry. They want to marry not because they want to have too many kids. You know, having too many kids nowadays is not even advisable because uh, the economy of the country is really very, very good. And if you are if you're the type that you want to marry, you know, and have too many babies, just make sure that you are able to train the children and as well take good care of your wife. Because if you don't take good care of your wife as a man, then you are a coward. And if you don't take good care of your children as a man, then you are worse than an unbeliever. That's what the Bible says. So having too many kids is not advisable. So that's why some people they come to they come together as a married couple, not because they want to make many children, but because they want to enjoy their married life. They want to travel the world. The man wants to take her wife around the world. The man wants to make her life feel comfortable, feel at home. The man wants to really love her wife. They want to live their life together and enjoy the beauty of marriage. So, another meaning of marriage. Marriage is coming together to coming together of two opposite partners from different homes to become a couple and live together. You could meet a man, uh, you are in London, you meet a man in the United States who is from, you know, Singapore. And this uh, man, as a sister, that you, are, you are meeting in Singapore, is from Australia. And you decide to, to become friends, not just friends, you know, I'm talking about marriage in Christ Jesus. So, brother, what church, what church are you attending? The brother says, I'm attending Deeper Life. And the brother said, what church are you attending? The sister said, I'm attending Christ Apostolic Church. Oh, this is good. You know the truth and I know the truth. I think uh, I like you and I would love to, for us to you know, be husband and wife. In some holiness churches, in some very grounded holiness churches, a brother that wants to marry a sister will not even have to talk to the sister one-on-one. -on -one. The sister that have seen a brother that she wants to marry will not talk to the brother one-on-one. -on -one. You will first of all go and pray about the sister, pray about the brother. Then whatever revelations God has given you, then you take it to the marriage council. This, is, this happens in a church where holiness is practiced. It happens in a church where holiness is practiced. And these doctrines are made by man. It's not really biblical. So marriage is coming together of two opposite partners from different homes to become a couple and live together. So you can marry anyone from any country as long as that person is born again. You can marry any sister, any brother from any state of your country as long as that sister or brother is born again. You people believe the same thing. Marriage is the joining of two separate and imperfect people to become one flesh. Marriage, I'm giving you all these definitions so that when I start explaining further, you will understand why I'm going that way. Marriage is coming together of two imperfect people. You are not perfect as a man, I am not perfect as a woman, and we come together as a couple to live together in the same house. Marriage, another meaning of marriage. Marriage can be defined as joining two imperfect people by oath so they can find each other's faults while living together and perfect each other's life. Yes, that is marriage. Marriage, another meaning of marriage. Marriage can be defined as a union only God can approve and sign. This is marriage. Marriage can be defined as a lost rib found. You know, before anything that will make you genuinely fall in love with a sister, it means that the rib that is missing out of your body is connected with that sister. When you see that your lost rib, you'll be connected both physically and spiritually. Something will happen to you that will make you know that this person is your wife. Something will happen to your body that will connect you and that sister. So when you find your lost rib, you'll be connected. That is marriage. Marriage can be defined as two that becomes one. 
Marriage is a union established by God, both physically and spiritually. Marriage can be defined as a covenant, as a covenant that can only be broken by God. Only genuine marriage can be successful. The genuine marriages are those approved by God. Only genuine marriages can be successful. You know, a lot of married couples today, they, they get tired too easily because of the character of the man. But the thing is, the man you marry, as long as you have married the man God said marry, and as long as you have done the right thing, you married legally, and it is the choice and the will of God for you, it is not possible that the man must be perfect. It is not possible that the woman must be perfect. It is the both of you that will perfect each other's life. When the man you marry begins to do things that you don't like, you call him. He might not see himself because he doesn't know himself. The sister too doesn't know herself because you cannot see your face. You cannot see your back. If someone that is behind you will see what is on your back and tell you, brother, sister, this is what is on your back. Can I remove it? So he, he will tell the sister, sister, I, I discovered something about you. And when you are doing this kind of correction to the woman you're married, you call your life partner, your soulmate, your helper. Eh? You correct her in love and in humility. That same love, that same, first, that same thing that made you fall in love with that sister in the first place, that same thing you saw in the life of that brother that made you fall in love with him, let it remain in you. Don't sell it. Don't throw it away. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. I see no reason why a sister and a brother will love themselves initially very, very, very vibrant. And in the, in the middle of their, in the middle age of their marriage, they start fighting, they start quarreling. The love begins to, degree, to decree and decline. It means that your love in the first place was not genuine. Because I, I see no reason why it should decline. So if you see, and this, all these things happen because in the course of time, you know, the sisters begin to see some bad traits, some bad characters, some bad behavioral, you know, patterns of life in the person she married. But when you begin to see all these things, you don't just look away. You don't just pretend you are not seeing it. Because if you love a brother, the Bible says that open rebuke is better than secret love. The person you love, you correct the person. You can call the brother or the sister. I discovered that this character was not in you before we married. Before we get married or before we got married, you were not like this. What's happened? And as you're talking to the husband, you talk with gentle voice. You talk with gentle tone. You talk with gentle, you know, a, a humble tone. With peaceful tone. Your tone matters a lot as well when you're talking to your couple. Yes. Don't say because you are a, you are a, you are a husband that your, sister, your wife cannot talk to you. Don't do that. It's very wrong. She is the same. He, she is one flesh with you. You are now one. You are no longer two. Because in marriage... One plus one is not two. One plus one is one. Two of you have become one. You see? So listen to her when she tries to correct you. Because you cannot see all of your character. You cannot see all of yourself as a person in general. So listen to the sister to tell you your thoughts, where you are making mistakes, where you are falling, so that two of you can come back together and look at your past life, how you were talking to her, how you were handling her, how you were treating her before you got married. Those things are made to you fall in love. Don't make sure that you don't lose them. The same thing when a brother sees mistakes, weaknesses in the life of the wife. You should call her, sister, this is what I discovered about you and I think you should work on it. If you see, you know, weaknesses of a brother you have married to and, you know, weaknesses of a sister you have married to, don't judge her with those, by those weaknesses. Don't judge him by those weaknesses. You cannot judge your wife. You cannot judge your husband. You cannot even judge anybody. You should call your wife. You should call your husband. Brother, sister, darling, honey. A lot of you today, you are no longer calling your husband sweet names. You are no longer calling your wife sweet names. I am coming to that. I want you to share this video very wide because this video is going to change a lot of marriage 
and this video is going to also help a lot of youths who are yet to get married so they don't make mistakes in marriage so this video might take up to maybe two to three parts because i really want to take my time and explain what marriage is all about and how you can keep your marriage you know in good shape even until the coming of our lord jesus christ so when you see weaknesses of a sister or a brother you have married to call them with love with humility and talk to him and they will listen to you so i take my time to give you some definitions of marriage so this past one i define the marriage the meaning of marriage to you and you have seen now that marriage when you are married to a man you have become one body with that man you have become one body with that man so when i return in the next part of this video i will tell you the characteristics of a marriage that uh, that is approved by god i will tell you the futures the attributes of marriage that god can approve when god approves a marriage then that marriage has become authentic and god will support that marriage if the marriage goes wrong god will interfere to put things right please before you go do four things for me by god's grace subscribe to this channel share this video comment on this video and like this video subscribe here if the value you are getting is helping your spiritual life is helping you in all round so that other people too as you share the video they can be blessed by this video and as you're doing that you're doing evangelism and god will bless you for so doing thank you for watching and thank you for coming by see you in my next video god bless you bye bye